this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Come on. Okay, yes. <laughs> Mr. Barrett, seconded by Mr. Kelly, moves for leave to introduce a bill entitled An Act to Amend the Criminal Code and Department of Canada Act. This motion is deemed adopted. The Honourable Member for Leeds Granville, Thousand Island, Trudeau Lakes, a succinct explanation. Madam Speaker, the Penalties for Perjury Act is a mechanism to restore Canadians' confidence in our democratic institutions. It would do two critical things. One, it would impose a mandatory minimum penalty under the Criminal Code for perjury before a House of Parliament. And second, would allow Parliament to impose a fine of up to $50,000 for a contempt against a House of Parliament. This is incredible important in the context that we've seen of the Prime Minister's $60 million arrive scam and, and contempt that's been found before this House. Common sense Conservatives, Madam Speaker, will stop the crime and restore accountability to Canada's Parliament. Mr. Barrett, seconded by Mr. Kelly, moves that the bill be now read a first time and be printed. This motion is deemed adopted. Oral questions, questions orales, honorable député. After nine years of this NDP Liberal government, the truth is out about their punishing carbon tax. A partial government report leaked by the Liberals to the marketing arm of the Liberal Party of Canada, the CBC, revealed that when factoring for inflation, the Liberal carbon tax will leave a $30 billion hole in our economic activity. The carbon tax will cost every Canadian household almost $2,000. The Liberals' activist environment minister tried to silence the parliamentary budget officer from, ex uh, from exposing this report. This is unbelievable. The Environment Minister is not worth the cost. When will he resign? Secretary. Madam Speaker, the member opposite is fighting action against climate change at the very moment that houses in her own community are threatened by wildfires. We are trying to make sure that we save people's homes. We are protecting Canadian communities. She's busy letting the planet burn. The Honourable Member for Kelowna Lake Country. Well, Madam Speaker, that's absolutely ridiculous. And the Liberals have been hiding the truth from Canadians. Right at the Finance Committee, the Parliamentary Budget Officer said, quote, we've been told explicitly not to disclose it and reference it. Come the on. Liberals have been trying to muzzle the Parliamentary Budget Officer. And, uh, the, you know, the government is still holding much of this report from the public. The entire report must be released to expose the economic vandalism of the carbon tax. The Environment Minister is not worth the cost. Will he resign? Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House. Madam Speaker, that member sure represents a beautiful part of Canada. The last time I was there, you could almost choke on the forest fire smoke. People in Kelowna, people in the Okanagan expect action on climate change. And they also know that eight out of ten of them, eight out of ten of them pay less uh, in, in uh, price on pollution than they get back in rebates. That is the case across the country where the tax applies. Madam Speaker, we are acting on the environment, we are acting on affordability. The people of the Okanagan can Oregon support that? Here, let's talk about foreign interference. One leader says it's no big deal. Another says it's very grave. Both want us to take their word for it, and we're no further ahead. The Minister of Public Safety said on Monday that he wouldn't breach secrecy because RCMP Deputy Commis Commissioner Mark Flynn warned him he would face criminal charges. Does the government think that all elected officials who consulted the documents should face the same charges? And does the government think we're any further ahead today with elected officials who are treading a fine line with the law? The Honourable Minister. Madam Speaker, I'd like to thank the Bloc uh, because yesterday we passed a bill at third reading, a very important bill when it comes to foreign interference. And that adds to a long list of solutions and initiatives this government has put in place to c combat foreign interference. We know that all countries in the world have to deal with this challenge, and Canada is distinguishing itself with the series of steps we've taken to strengthen our institutions and to counter foreign interference. The Honourable Member for Salaberry sur -Wa. Madam Speaker, there are two opposing versions. The Pollyanna, move along, nothing to see here. 
and the alarmist call 911. We don't know if one or both are telling the truth. We don't know if one or both have given in to the lure of the spotlight. This accomplishes nothing except to build mistrust. And now, thanks to them, when the Hogg Commission tables its report, there's a risk that one of the two camps, the Pollyannas or the Alarmists, will question the Commission's findings. Is it too much to ask that elected officials be responsible, abide by the law, and let the judge do her work? The Honourable Minister. Of course, we want to allow Justice Hogg to do her job. And that's why the House leaders have negotiated a very clear and broad mandate for that commission. We greatly appreciate Justice Hogg's work. And meanwhile, I don't know whether the bloc leader has stepped forward to consult these documents, which are confidential. The NDP leader did, the Green leader did. Yesterday, Common Sense Conservatives forced the NDP Liberal government to release some of the data that they've been suppressing, which proves that the carbon tax costs every Canadian family nearly $2,000. The Environment Minister has misled Canadians. When will he resign? Yeah, here. The Honourable Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I think that the people who should resign are the people who have hundreds of times voted against providing Canadians with clean air, clean water, protecting the environment. Not tens of times, hundreds of times, Madam Speaker. If anyone should resign in this House, it is these people. Eight out of ten Canadians are better off because of carbon pricing, where the federal program applies. We're helping Canadians. We're fighting climate change. They're doing none of, the, none of that. The member for Calgary, Rocky Ridge. Well, Madam Speaker, this government only does the right thing when they get caught. They only disclose this information because Conservatives forced them to. This NDP government put a gag order on the Parliamentary Budget Officer because they didn't want Canadians to know the economic cost of the carbon tax. Per capita GDP is falling. The carbon tax makes life more expensive, proving that this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. The Environment Minister has misled Canadians by hiding the truth. When will he resign? Yes. Honourable Minister of Innovation. Here, I think we've answered that question many times. The sloppy Conservatives, we know where they're going. They're against climate change. They've resigned on acting on behalf of Canadians. They've resigned on taking the best side of the Canadians. They've resigned on future generation, Madam Speaker. Think about that. They will not stand up to fight for our kids and our grandkids. Climate change is the issue of our time, Madam Speaker, and they've resigned from this issue. So it's laughable to hear them speak about resigning. Eight of ten Canadians will be better off, Madam Speaker. We're going to fight for Canadians at every step of the way, and Canadians know that, and they see the games that the Conservatives are playing this morning. I'm a member for Sturgeon River, River Parkland. Well, Madam Speaker, let's test that hypothesis and call an election right now. Yeah. After months of fighting this NDP Liberal government just to get the facts, we finally got some of the documents. The government's own analysis on the carbon tax shows that Canadians will lose nearly $30 billion, costing families $1,800 each year. Clearly, Canadians are not better off with this job-killing carbon tax. Everyone is paying more and getting less. This Liberal government is not worth the cost. The Minister needs to take responsibility for hiding this information from Canadians. When will the Prime Minister be demanding his resignation? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, if the member opposite actually cares about the next generation, as we're looking into Father's Day, let's think about that. We're talking about taking responsibility today for our actions to make sure that we're passing over a healthy planet to our next generations. Eight out of ten Canadians get more back from the climate rebate than they do pay in any kind of carbon pricing, but more importantly, we're making sure that we're protecting the planet for our children. Honourable Member for Sturgeon River Parkland. Well, Madam Speaker, if that was true, why is this NDP Liberal government working so hard to cover up the documents that prove them wrong? It was only common sense Conservatives who forced this NDP Liberal government to reveal the truth. And the Liberals tried to discredit our own budget watchdog. But it was revealed that they were hiding the true cost of their carbon tax with secret documents and gag orders. These Liberals can run, but they can't hide from the true cost of their inflationary carbon tax. Canadians will lose nearly $30 billion a year. That's eight $1,800 for each Canadian family. The minister needs to face the consequences for this cover-up. When will the Prime Minister demand his resignation? The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House. Madam 
Madam Speaker, this environment minister is the first environment minister in history to put, to, to put forward a credible plan to meet our 2050 net zero objectives and our Paris commitments. That member, you know what he should do? You know what they preferred, which would have remained secret? His premier, who scoured the universe, looked on the internet, got out his calculator, did all of that analysis that Scott Moe does, and said, you know what? The price on pollution is the cheapest way to go about fighting climate change and putting money in people's billion dollars, Madam Speaker. That's the true cost to Canadian families from the Liberal NDP carbon tax that the Environment Minister tried so desperately to cover up. $1,800 cost to every household. It's no wonder the Environment Minister did his best to gag the Parliamentary Budget Officer and cover up the true cost of the carbon tax. Instead of sending a memo to the PBO, demanding his silence, why didn't the Environment Minister instead, instead send a memo to the PMO with his resignation? Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Madam Speaker, that the Conservatives do not care about the future of our planet. They will not stand up for our children and our grandchildren. On this side of the House, we're advancing tax fairness for Canadians with our new capital gains regime. That means that if you're earning your paycheck or your hard-earning income on a paycheck, you won't pay a penny more unless you're earning over $250,000 a year from the sale of an asset uh, or um, other, you're, you're going to pay uh, more. You won't pay more. And uh, Conservatives believe if you're flipping burgers, uh, you should pay more tax than if you're flipping stocks or homes. Honourable Member for Edmonton West. The Liberal mm -hmm. response to questions on more taxes is talking points adding more taxes. <laughs> the Minister in the Environment interfered with the work of the independent parliamentary budget officer. He stood repeatedly in this House and misled Canadians so that they would be better off financially with the carbon tax, all the while covering up the fact that the Liberal NDP carbon tax will cost Canadians more than $30 billion a year. Instead of working to increase the economic vandalism of the carbon tax, why doesn't the Environment Minister just do Canadians a favour and resign? In a cabinet of serial lawbreakers, the Minister from Edmonton is showing that after nine years of this NDP Liberal government that this Prime Minister isn't worth the corruption. This is the Minister who's been cashing checks from a lobbying firm that's lobbying his own government. And Global News revealed text messages that show a Randy involved in a $500,000 fraud case um, is at the Minister's company. So it's a really simple question and we haven't been able to get an answer. Maybe the government House Leader can tell us today. Why won't they tell us what Randy's last name is? Honourable Leader of the Government in the House. Madam Speaker, as this member well knows and has, has been repeated many times, the Minister took an hour to answer the questions coming from, among others, the Honourable Colleague across. He has, uh, uh, lives under the most stringent conflict of interest and ethics guidelines uh, in the world, and he's uh, completely answered all of the questions that have been posed. Madam Speaker. Member for Leeds, Granville, Thousand Islands, Rita Lakes. Well, just like the hour we've spent not getting answers from these Liberals, we didn't get any answers from the Minister when he was at committee. Just like Conservatives ordered the Minister to produce his phone records, and he didn't do that, and now the committee has sent for those same records again. Liberals blocked the summons of the other Randy for coming to committee. Conservatives have now ordered the Minister from Edmonton's two business partners to appear at committee in this case of a $500,000 fraud and, and another Randy. So the question is very simple. We'll see if the government House Leader can answer it. Is the other Randy at Sunnyvale having a cheeseburger picnic, or is he in Cabinet with this Prime Minister? Honourable Leader of the Government in the House. You know, Madam Speaker, uh, in an age of climate change, in an age of ensuring tax fairness, in an age of a number of major issues uh, facing the country that we continue to work on, it is amazing to me every time this minister gets up and asks a question that has been asked dozens of times in this chamber, answered dozens of times in this chamber and in committee, the minister has responded to all of that, Madam Speaker.